Hello all, good morning. Travis Dampier at Travis Dampier Ministries, a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ. It is Sunday, October 25th, um, and I uh, pulled one of these shirts out of my closet. Just, you know, I mean, one of these old Sean Johns. I mean, when I was uh, a little bit younger, I used to like these. But I love what it says. It says, all or nothing. And I tell you that in the kingdom of God, <laughs> I'm telling you, it is all or nothing. I mean, you choose him with all all of your mind, heart, and soul, or you don't choose them at all. It's like it is It is a, a very narrow gate. That's why he said it was narrow. I mean, I used to understand, I thought, this is what I thought, um, here in the world. I was like, oh, well, you know, you know, you believe in, in Jesus Christ, and you know what I mean, and, and I'm going to be doing my sin, and it covered, man, life is good, man, you know what I mean? That's, that's what I thought. <laughs> um, but little by little, man, I'm telling you, as I um, got older and older in Christ, so meaning, I, I remember, I got saved in 2002, I told you guys that, um, I was a baby Christian, and trust me, like I got saved, I was still doing everything that I was doing. I, you know, I had a different conviction in me, though. Um, and I was on fire for the Lord. You know, I mean, actually, when I first got saved, I didn't want to do anything. I mean, I threw out all kinds of like uh, scary movies in the house, anything that looked demonic. I threw it out. Like I was actually turned on 100 percent. But then um, over time, it started dying down a little bit because the Lord was teaching me things little by little. Um, so the first thing that he did, it was probably the first eh, four to six months of being saved. I mean, I was turned on. I was hot. I'm reading the Bible. like. I mean, I was in. I just wanted to learn more of the Lord. I want to get close to the Lord. I was so um, passionate about preaching the gospel. I mean, I was in, you know what I mean? Like a hundred percent all, you know, I, mean? I was in. Um, and then about four to six months later, when the Lord, uh, started allowing me, and it was probably external pressures, because, you know what I mean, my uh, my first wife, I mean, she was really pressuring me, like, hey, you're leaving the family behind, and, you know, what's wrong? So, you know, I got everybody else, you know, in the, in the family saved, you know what I mean, which is a blessing, but then, um, you know, because she wasn't, you know, super passionate about the Lord, you know, she started pulling me away, you know what I mean? It was external pressures that started pulling me away, and I said, well, you know, maybe uh, I don't need to be this hot and on fire. Um, and then I slowly started getting into things again, like drinking. I had stopped drinking. You know, what I mean, I wasn't smoking anymore. Uh, and I slowly started getting back into things. Right. Uh, and I also believe that God allowed me to um, because some of the stuff that he said to me, like I remember um, what I had, uh, we were driving, uh, me and my wife at the time, we were driving down the street. And then I said, you know, um, it's in my spirit. I feel like, you know, like having a beer. And I hadn't for months. I quit. Um, but I quit because I thought that I shouldn't be drinking. You know what I mean? Like I shouldn't be trying to enjoy it, indulge in that stuff. And then um, I said, you know what? The Lord told me that it's okay to, to go over here and, and have a beer. So I went and then when I was sitting there and I was talking to the Lord and he said, have a drink. And I said, OK. And I sipped the beer. And he said, do you still hear me? Am I still there? I said, yeah. Are you still saved? I said, well, I can hear you. Yeah. And he said, OK. He said, you're not saved by your work. You're saved by me, by your blood. Remember that. And then he was, just, he was just silent. And I said, okay. You know what I mean? So, so that was when he demonstrated grace in my life. And he wanted me to know that, yes, although that you're on fire and you're doing all these things, like my blood is what saves you. You know what I mean? So make sure that that is the case, um, that, that was coming out of your heart. I said, okay. And then he said, but, you know, continue to, to believe me and look to me. So anyway, over time, I, I you know, I'll, uh, I continued to grow in him, but I was still, you know, drinking. I was still, you know what I mean, smoking. I'm not going to make this a big story again. But over time, after, you know, he showed me his grace, you know, what eventually started happening was I got, I don't want to say I was completely led astray, but, you know, there was a couple of things that I needed to get addressed that I didn't. But when it was time for me 
as I grew older to get rid of those things, he went ahead and, and got rid of it. You know what I mean? For me, how did he get rid of it? He told me point blank. And he told me numerous times that Dre, you need to quit smoking. You need to quit drinking. Uh, even when uh, I had a real bad diabetic scare, I had 700, it was like, what was it? 600, you know what I mean? In my blood a um, couple of years back. And they told us to do this drinking and stuff. Blah, blah. So I stopped again, but then I, I kept going. So he gave me warning after warning. Uh, and he even told me in my spirit, hey, stop drinking, stop smoking. Um, the first thing that I quit was uh, smoking when he almost took me out. I was like literally wheezing from my nose and mouth at the same time. I was super sick. Um, literally held my hand out, dude, in my bed. Saying, Lord, please don't take me. I, I won't do it anymore. Um, it is funny how we get to be uh, like Jonah. You know what I mean? Sometimes the Lord says, go over here and go do this. And then you go, dude, I don't want to do it. <laughs> and dude, he will make you do it. <laughs> like when he loves you and he disciplines you, he will. You, he'll get it done. He has to take you out to get it done. So uh, he almost took me out, man, like a couple of times. And I said, OK, dude, I, I, I'll stop, Lord. I'll stop. Um, but that is what the Christian life is about. You know, it is about, yes, it is about grace and it is about um, his blood. <laughs> because trust me, dude, we all fall short of the glory of God. It's not because I got cleaned and now, you know, what I mean, today, you know, what I mean, it's better. Um, yes. But. You know, he can still hold me accountable for everything that I've done in the past, like even as a child, like you you can't get rid of it. So um, the blood covers you and he sprinkles it, you know, over things that you're not even aware of. Some of us, we're, we're sitting, we don't even know that we did it. Um, but the willful sin, you know, what I mean, the smoking that I kept doing when he's telling me not to and the uh, drinking that I was doing when he kept telling me not to felt it in my gut numerous times. He was telling me. Um, I said, well, you know what I mean? You told me um, by the blood, you know what I mean? I'm saved, so I'm going to keep doing it. But I was being disobedient. Giving your all to Christ, that finding that narrow gate is obedience. It is his job to tell you how you are not pleasing the Father. That's Jesus' job. Literally, the Father gave him that job with the Holy Spirit. So you are going to understand the way through the Holy Ghost. You know what I mean? And that is your gift for accepting Jesus Christ as Lord. If I abide in you and you abide in me, right? So, so he will lead the way through the Holy Ghost with you and tell you how to please the Father. You know what I mean? That's his job. And you need to obey. You obey. You ain't got to worry about nothing because, you know, it's his responsibility. You can get up to heaven and say, you told me to do this. Yeah, you better have been hearing him and not some other uh, word, but trust me, like you'll get to know his voice and his sheep know his voice. You'll know him. And you know what I mean? And when you know his voice, you know him because he'll all also start to tell you the secret things. Like there's many things um, biblically that he's told me that p pastor skip. Um, he's talked to me about things that he's done in my own life. Um, you know, one, what he has demonstrated um, in my life uh, and I've seen it you know, in, in uh, the Bible, all throughout the, the pages and the people in the Bible, he demonstrates who he is through people. <clears throat> so in these stories, he's literally demonstrating who he is. Um, so me as another walking word, he's demonstrating um, what others are doing to him, what his children are doing. And it's happening to me in the same way. The same kind of disrespect, the same kind of rejection, the same kind of, of, of uh, uh, adultery and all these things have happened in my life over time. And God revealed it to me. He said, Trev, you know, what I mean, um, these things I've done for you one so you can actually know my heart. And I know his heart because I felt the same pains. You know, what I mean, not a, to the extreme as him, but I felt them. So it's not just me, you know, like asking for forgiveness sometimes, you know, sometimes, you know, when I see people rejecting God and they're not listening, I, I say, man, sorry, sorry, father, that they're doing this to you. Just like you would, you know, what I mean, if you were a good son, your dad was on the couch weeping. What would you do? Would you go, hey, I'm going out with my friends and let them sit there and weep? Or would you go over there, dude, and hug them and say, I'm sorry, man, like this is happening. Like what, 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 are, what are my brothers and sisters doing to you? Like, what do you want me to do, Dad? I'll, I'll help. That's all, man. 
You know what I mean? You need to know who he is. He's a really, really good father, man. He's really good. And it's hurts him um, that people are rejecting him like this. I mean, he created you from dust, from nothing. His thoughts about your entire life, the God of all the universe, literally thought about you. <laughs> I mean, I remember when he was talking about Sodom and Gomorrah, um, you know, when he was talking to Abraham, Abraham said, you know, if, if there was one, would you spare him? He said, dude, if there was one, I'd spare the entire city. Hallelujah. He'd lead the 99 to get that one. And that one is you. You need to think about that. Anyway, let's get to the word of the day because this is a good one. And I'm I'm really, really pleased by it. Uh, my glance, I said, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The Lord is speaking here. I'm telling you. But here we go. Uh, Ephesians 5, 19 through 20. Speaking to one another in psalms, with psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit, the Holy Spirit. Sing and make music from your heart to the Lord. Always giving thanks to God the Father for everything, not some things, everything. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, in the name of the unity that God is back to the Father. Hallelujah. Um, let me read the whole thing. I'm not going to go over the whole thing, but I'm going to read 5 through 20. Really, really, really important scriptures. Um, this gives back to, once again, the, I, and I told you guys about this in my video when I talked about the always saved, uh, 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 saved, always saved thing. I'm telling you, don't, 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 don't get spit out of his mouth. Lukewarm, I will spit you out of my mouth. All or nothing. There's no in between. In between is lukewarm. So if you ain't giving them all of you, my heart and soul, you're nothing. You're not, you're not doing anything for the father. Without faith, it's impossible. He didn't say, oh, you can still get it. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. And without your all, you aren't given 100% of faith in Jesus Christ. You're not. And if you're not, then you don't have his blood covering you. And if you don't have his blood covering you, you're going to be held accountable for every single sin. You deny him, he will deny you in front of his father. He said that. What's going to happen is everybody will be held accountable for their judgment, every word, every thought, everything. The difference is Jesus is going to come in and he'll say, hey, <laughs> As a lawyer, hallelujah, hey, you can't have this one right here. I already covered all of his sins by my blood. He's covered. Bam, this one, he's covered. This one, he's covered. This one, uh-uh, he didn't believe. I don't stand up for this one. But, but Jesus, didn't I, uh, uh, like, send all this money to charity for you? Didn't I go to church on, on Christmas? I went to church three Christmas in a row, and I even sat to my sister-in-law. Wait, I never knew you. I, I don't stand for him, Father. And, and you basically got to be held accountable for everything you've done. Everything. <laughs> you don't you don't want that. You, you don't want that. All. Give it all. Find out what's going on in you right now and saying, what am I putting before Christ? Because I guarantee if it was me, I could sit here, dude, and I could you can sit right in front of me. I'll tell each one of you what you're doing. Most of you are cowards. Most of you are strong cowards. I mean, you won't tell anybody that you're a Christian. You won't even put it on any of your social media pages that you're a Christian. You won't even literally tell your family that you're a Christian. I'm like, how in the world do people even know that you're, how do you know for yourself you're a Christian? You go, well, because I go to church on Easter. I pray sometimes. When do you pray? When somebody's on their deathbed? How many times does that happen with you? Oh, it's happened like uh, once or twice. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Now, God is going to be the judge, and you should be thankful that God's the judge, because trust me, even us as humans can, can judge you very easily. And also keep in mind that we will judge with Christ later. You know what I mean? That, that's the objective, because when we are obedient to the Holy Spirit, we actually get nurtured, nurtured, nurtured to have the understanding and will of God in us. I don't have to ask God every single time that I'm doing something, even though I do. But I know what he's going to say before he says it, because I have adapted to his nurturing and his teaching all this time. I know what he's going to say before he says it most times. You know what I mean? So that's the goal. How are you going to rule and reign with Christ if he can't trust you to have his understanding? If you got to keep going to his office every single time you got a question, you guys work normal jobs. 
You know, if you have a VP and the VP at the beginning, yeah, he'll tell you, you know what I mean, how he wants things done, da 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 you know what I mean, you go for a couple months, you don't even got to ask him. You go, hey, you know what I mean, I've been through this before, so I already knew what you would have said. So this is what I did. He goes, hey, good job. Well done. Good and faithful servant. Hallelujah. Now, we're 15 minutes in, people. All right, let me let me uh, get this going so I can get you guys out in your day. Uh, but Sunday, so, you know, probably a good day for a sermon. Um, so I'm going to get through it. Here we go. 5 through 20. Ephesians 5. If you have a nice little celly or a Bible, read this one because this is, this is important. And mind you, I didn't choose this. This is God choosing this one. Uh, he does it every morning. I don't choose this. I just go to the Bible gateway, whatever random scripture is there. That's what I do. And uh, that's usually 100% of the Lord's word every time. Uh, I would hope for a thing. So probably sometimes I pray in the spirit and then he gives me that word to say. Because um, because it's like uh, that essence of it is there. But um, usually it's it's just his uh, will of what it is. Um, but he does listen to me. So I'm going to say, yeah, Trev, this probably is a good idea. Why don't you speak this out? Here we go. Follow God's example, therefore, as dearly loved children and walk in the way of love, just as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us as a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. Oh, isn't that pretty? Yes. Love like Jesus. This is that's where everybody like stops. They, they never want to um, think about the lion of Judah. So God's judgment side of himself. But in, uh, here we go. Uh, three. Uh, three. But among you. Who's he talking to? Wait a minute. Follow God's down there for a dim Oh, he's talking to Christians. Oh, okay. All right. But among you, there must not be even a hint of sexual immorality or of any kind of impurity or of greed because they, these are improper for God's holy people. Hey, 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 hey. What do you mean? I, I can't. What do you mean I shouldn't have this stuff in me? Huh? What are you talking about? I thought I was just, it's just nice Jesus and the blood covered me. Hey. What's up with that? I got to do something. Uh, nor should there be obscenity, foolish talk, or coarse joking, which are out of place, but rather thanksgiving. For of this, you can be sure. Oh, I can be guaranteed. He said, for this stuff, you can be sure. He didn't say you can guess. He said, dude, you can be sure of this, that no immoral, impure, or greedy person such a person is an idolater, has any, he didn't say, he didn't say you know, someone's good again, has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. And then this second almost underlined this one coming up. Let no one deceive you with empty words, for because of such things, God's wrath comes on those who are disobedient. There you go. Therefore, do not be partners with them. It's, it's about obedience. That's what it is. It's about obedience. For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the world. Live as children of light, for the fruit of the light consists in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. And find out, goodness gracious, man, he's speaking through this thing. Find out what pleases the Lord. Have nothing to do with the fruitless deeds of darkness, but rather expose them. That's what I'm talking about, man. Expose them. It is shameful even to mention what the disobedient do in secret. So don't be sitting over there trying to talk rumors about uh, Jill and John, you know, in the bathroom. You know what I mean? Because you really want to talk about it and be with them in that room and talking about that nasty stuff, dude. You know what I mean? So that way, one, it can get in your thoughts and mind, but you are are, are preaching the the sinfulness in a glorified manner, even though you're talking crap about somebody telling how bad it is, your real goal inside is you 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 want to you want to discuss it, you want to chew on it. You need to chew on God's word. Don't be chewing on you know I me mean, negative sinful word. Get it out of you. Ignore it. Run from it. Um, where am I? Uh, Eleven. It is shameful even to mention what the disobedient do in secret. But everything exposed by the light becomes visible, and everything that is illuminated becomes a light. This is why it says, wake up, sleeper, rise from the dead. And Christ will shine on you. Man, he's trying to shake this nation and shake you up. Wake up. You need to get right with Christ, man, and and and, and quit ignoring. You know what I mean? The, the fact that he's a holy God. You can't buy your way into heaven. You need the blood. Don't get me wrong here. 
But then once you have the blood, you need to find out what pleases him and what displeases him. You need to be obedient. Obedience is the key. That That's the key. You just be obedient. You ain't got to worry. Just like I said, nothing. you got to be obedient. Be very careful then how you live. Not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the, the Lord's will is. Do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the spirit, speaking to one another with psalms, hymns and songs from the spirit. Sing and make music from the, the heart to the Lord. Always giving thanks to God, the father for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Man, that is a mic drop central right there. We're 20 minutes in, people. Man, just pushing all that out, dude, just almost wore me out right now. I'm telling you. Um, all or nothing. You need to sit back and you need to think about what you have uh, rejected God on. Um, what are you putting first before God? Um, he's been talking to you in the spirit. You know, you've been um, sitting over here looking at all these videos that I've been pushing and you've been debating going like, maybe I should uh, put it on my Twitter account that I'm a Christian. Maybe, maybe I should just do one post, you know, that I love Jesus. Maybe I should, you know, I'm not going to do that because people are uh, 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 going to look down on me. You know what I mean? They're going to they're gonna think that um, I'm, I'm, I'm like bashing their uh, religion. You know, I, I'm not going to do that. You know, Jesus wouldn't want me to do that. You know what I mean? He wouldn't want me to bash you. I'm telling you, that's a straight up lie from hell. <laughs> you know what I mean? You, you deny him, he will deny you in front of the father. He cares nothing about everyone else's faith. He cares about yours. And your relationship. He doesn't even care about other Christians with you. He cares about your, you, your heart, and your relationship. That is what you're going to be held accountable. Do you have a true relationship with God or are you rejecting him? You better think about that. And you better make a move. And make a move now. Repent. Get right with Jesus Christ. Okay, people. Have a good Sunday. Uh, hopefully you can find some praise music. I tell you, I used to recommend um, <laughs> people, but... Dude, more and more, these pastors are disappointing me. They're blind to what's happening right now. If you see any pastors right now not talking about we're at the end of days and the cusp of this thing, and they're telling you that everything's going to be fine and dandy, run. Goodness, man, there's so many false prophets and teachers out there, dude. I'm so sad to see it. So sad to see it. But also keep in mind, though, that God can still nurture you with his word through uh, false teachers. His word is truth. So when the when the Bible's read, you know, I mean, truth comes out, even though someone is is deceitful on the back end, as long as they don't twist it. That's what you, the real thing is. You got to be uh, careful because they can twist that word and they twist it like Satan always does. And you can get led astray. So that's really why you want to uh, stay away. But, you know, but despite it, God can still use it for your good. Have a good day, people. God bless you and yours. Later.